just to give you an idea of the background of my community it's a community that had uh, one of the world's largest steel furnaces people in this community would often fall into that furnace or die in industrial accidents when people would die from tragic industrial accidents what would often happen is it would have a certain effect on society it would have an effect upon the children and it would have an effect upon uh, demoralizing individuals in the area because some of these people that worked in this this place called the mill would make uh, just incredible amounts of money like forty fifty dollars an hour and uh, there tended to be a trade-off between the value of human life and money and uh, not only that but it was a community that uh, as a result of the injection of some of these values had uh, uh, various groups that had some really strange ideas about things so when I was younger for example I went to a church that at that church believed that if a person ever committed a sin after baptism that quite frankly they were damned and that they could never uh, regain their salvation again and so being in this environment and also being in a family that uh, believed in this kind of thing my mother you know coming from an environment of uh, uh, where she she had actually worshipped Satan and uh, had been molested as a child it uh, it caused her to have certain struggles as well in her life and in her desire to uh, maintain moral purity in the family was was beyond measure because she had come out of this this great uh, abomination and she didn't want this kind of thing to continue on uh, in the next generation uh, so you know in my family it was not even not even an option to like smoke cigarettes drink liquor even watch cable TV it was uh, very much the case that because of our, our moral stance we were very much outcasts in society whereas the rest of society you know in the surrounding community I should say the rest of of the people they would indulge in practically every sin they possibly could because they knew you know as, as most all of them worked at the mill it was the largest employer in the county they knew that their time could be very short and they wanted to you know reap as much pleasure from the huge amounts of money that they made before they might for example die in an industrial accident and so it was a very very bad bad place to be in in my youth and there was a group of children for specifically that they must have come from Chicago uh, and I, I think what had happened is that their parents likely wanted to have good jobs at, at the mill to make a lot of money and you know these kids had Chicago accidents and there was a large group of them well you know Chicago is a lot more advanced in its crime and um, the individuals were very advanced in their skills and their skills to um, to hunt down seek and and try to destroy people quite frankly and um, uh, every day when I would walk to school between the grades of about first or second grade all the way until maybe about uh, fifth or sixth grade there were in a, gr a large group of these Chicago kids that uh, it formed almost like an attack team and what they would do is they would uh, you know basically uh, search me out as I'd be walking home from school and they would attack me they would attack me for hours not only would they attack me for hours but um, you know it would be the case they'd have me on the ground and, I, and they'd be kicking me in the groin with what felt like steel toe boots for a very very long time well you know a lot of this was indeed because I didn't really fit in to the other students so it was easy for them to sort of like um, you know take me aside from the group 
of you know all the masses of students walking home and to you know to get at me and the reason why I didn't fit in with the other students is because I didn't indulge in the moral decay that they indulge in the profane language the um, the loss of the flesh and that kind of thing the desires for things and you know how students would talk about things that they wanted and and uh, from their parents and desired and and talk about things they stole from the store that was another big thing that happened there was a lot of children that were stealing from stores all over town it got to the point where you know you could go into a a store to buy clothes and you would find that all those clothes that you would go in to buy were you were used even though it was a new clothing store you know and the reason why they're used is because people were returning clothing they're returning clothing because um, you know they were they're buying it they were wearing it until it got worn out they didn't wash it and then they return it to the store and they were doing that and stealing stuff bragging about what they stole and you know it was just a, a huge moral decay in society people that weren't working at the mill were uh, living off of welfare and it was at the time when you'd have one big welfare mother that would have all these welfare kids and she'd be collecting like maybe eight different welfare checks and and so it was a, a time when when there was just this moral filth everywhere well not only did I have that problem of these students attacking me for years and years and years and uh, and that problem happening every day from after school and they must have received some sort of satisfaction from it um, but I also had other problems I had problems with everybody in school practically attacking me and it made things worse especially when teachers would present me as an example to students an example for them to follow and since I was in a learning disability class where behavior disorder students and learning disability students were often not carefully distinguished one from the other but they were both in the same classroom it made things a lot worse and needless to say it seemed like all during school I would have various attacks it would be you know psychological emotional it would be in all kinds of different ways because I did not like I say fit into every everybody everybody else's way of living I, I it was not part of their 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 culture and what it was is that you know if you do something that's wrong and you know it's wrong and um, and you want to have relief from that what people often do is they try to convince other people to engage in the same sinful pleasures in order to justify that it's right because you know the more of a consensus people have you know in, in a group the more they feel that those wrong things are actually right so you know if like all teenage boys let's say smoke cigarettes then what that means to a, a teenage boy is that it's it's an alright thing to do because everybody else is doing it and um, what happens is when there's one person that says no it's not alright and then everybody else feels the guilt of their conscience telling them it's wrong then you know those those students that feel the guilt of their conscience want to strike out at that person that said it, says it's wrong because they want to actually strike out at their very own conscience but they can't strike out at their conscience they have to they have to um, actually have some sort of symbol or like an emblem uh, of that conscience that they can go out and nail which would be me and um, needless to say I had this problem all throughout all throughout school where you know I was always being attacked and it didn't quite stop until about my senior year of high school or so but it was still pretty bad and you know in in until then and uh, I guess the point of this video is just to you know present the idea that um, you know there there is there is hope for students that um, have these kind of issues I remember when I was in I think kindergarten I still had some of these issues um, that's before I really had the problem with this group from Chicago 
you know, nailing me every, uh, for, for long periods of time after school every day. But when I was in kindergarten, uh, uh, I had problems so bad that you know, I would vomit every morning before school, every single morning. And, you know, my father was unemployed a lot because, you know, he was a carpenter and it was during the, the times of the, the recessionary period of the 80s. And so he really, you know, enforced the idea on me that, you know, my school was my work. And he did that because he didn't have a job to go to often. And uh, he really wanted to have a job to go to. And my mother didn't work because she was, you know, somebody that took care of the home. That's what she believed in. And so I was the only person for a long time that actually went out and, and, and did something. And, you know, besides my father looked for a job. And um, it was the case that, uh, you know, because of those early experiences of having to go through all kinds of trials to go to school and get an education and do all these kind of things. I mean, I've gone through 12 years of college today and I've got a total of six degrees and I'm working on my Master's of Divinity currently in professional ministries. Um, and, you know, what that really says to me is that sometimes a lot of these these issues that we have with um, you know uh, uh, evil are, are really uh, for our own spiritual development you might not think so but like with the Apostle Paul he had a thorn in his flesh he had a thorn in his flesh to keep him from having too much pride in his exceeding revelation in Romans chapter 9 for example you know, we see the case that, um, you know, there's, um, you know, pots made for honorable purposes, pots made for dishonorable purposes. And uh, it gives you an idea that there's actually a purpose for evil. And uh, quite frankly, if I didn't have those experiences in my life where I had to have these, these huge hurdles to go over, then I, I wouldn't be one of the world's most educated people with a learning disability today. Those children though that group of, of uh, attack team students uh, from Chicago it wasn't just me that they went out to nail when they went out to get people uh, it was actually the case that they would they would go out and attack even older people even elderly people that would be walking down the street and they'd beat them down to the ground do the same things to them it's just that you know since the police when they'd drive by and they'd see you know like some kids beating down on one kid you know they wouldn't do anything whereas if they drive by and they saw some kids beating down an older person they would do something about it but what the case was is that these kids were very very smart and if for example a cop would have tried to intercede between some kids beating down on some other kids this group of kids you know they would be able to share a common testimony against that cop to actually imply that you know the cop went out against them you know when they were just minding their own business and and you know and and try to present this this fabricated story and that's one of the things that these kind of people would do often is you know they would group together in this large mob and they were very 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 smart criminally and they would be able to fabricate stories and they would be able to all testify to the same story and they would be able to practically do anything because of that the reason why this kind of activity occurs it has a lot to do with the the very fact that people want to be in a group of others that do the same kind of sins and are of like mind to believe that they're morally justified or to not have a sense of moral conscience moral conscious to say that the things that they're doing are wrong and they get a lot of pleasure from doing those wrong things that they do and and so you know this is this is why it occurs and when other people feel that same pleasure and and when other people are induced into the same system it just multiplies and grows and there's not a lot that can be done about it if you're just one guy going up against that mob because it's one testimony against let's say eight 